Have you ever wondered if there was a cloud-based solution for using the Arduino IDE, something that would allow you to access your Arduino sketches regardless of what computer you happen to be using? Well, the answer is yes, thanks to CodeBender, a very awesome and super easy to use web browser plugin. In this tutorial, we're gonna do a quick overview of the CodeBender IDE. So you're probably familiar with the Arduino Integrated Development Environment, or just IDE for short. It's the program that gets installed on your computer's hard drive. It's where you write your computer code, called a sketch in Arduino jargon, that will get loaded to your Arduino board. CodeBender is a replacement for the Arduino IDE. It's a plugin that gets added to your web browser. It currently works with Chrome and Firefox web browsers, and can work on PCs, Macs, or Linux. So CodeBender claims that getting up and running with her traditional Arduino IDE can be a bit messy, especially when it comes down to ensuring the correct drivers are installed on your machine. In fact, one of the pains that CodeBender seeks to alleviate is to remove the hassle of installing the Arduino IDE. Now, I personally have downloaded the Arduino IDE many times on several different computers and operating systems, and can only really think of one time that I had some trouble. But if you do go to the Arduino forum, you'll notice that the first forum category is installation and troubleshooting with over 45,000 posts on that topic. So this tells me that plenty of people do get stuck and probably frustrated with getting the Arduino IDE set up correctly. So how easy is CodeBender to set up? Well, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I'm gonna speed up this process, but I will put a clock down in the corner just to see how long it really takes us to do this. So I'll go ahead and click sign up. I'm at the CodeBender website, it's just codebender.cc. So once I activate my account, through confirming an email, it takes me to this getting started page. And they claim that I can be done with this in two minutes. So let's see if we can make it happen. All right, I've got to add the Chrome extension. Again, this is a web browser extension. Okay, it looks like that got installed. Go back to CodeBender. And it looks like it's taken me already from page four to five. There was five steps, I'm already on step four. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my board. Now I already have my Arduino Uno plugged in. So I'll go ahead and select that board. That is definitely my serial port, and I'll go ahead and run on the Arduino. Now it says I'm done. I'll go ahead and look at my Arduino board. And indeed, the LED is blinking at pin 13. That's pretty awesome. So, so that was well less than two minutes. So I can say that, hey, they have achieved their goal of getting this down pretty quick. So once you have everything set up and you log in, you get taken to your home page. And the prominent feature of the home page are all the sketches that you've written or uploaded or cloned into CodeBender. So let's go ahead and check out the actual CodeBender IDE. So I'll just click Create Sketch. And what this is gonna do is take us to the CodeBender IDE. So here on the right side is where you actually input the code that you would in, in your Arduino sketch. And you can see that they auto-populate the void setup and void loop functions for you, so that's pretty handy. And you will you might also notice that the color scheme is just slightly different in the Arduino, and then in the native Arduino IDE, the uh, keywords are orange, here they're blue. A neat feature here is with the cursor, you can see the whole line of the editor here is highlighted. That's kind of helpful, so you always know where your cursor is. And then on the left side, you get uh, the numbers going down the side, letting you know what line of code that you're on. Another neat feature is you can collapse curly brackets. So if you have a bunch of code, say, inside a for loop, and you wanna work on another piece of the program, you don't wanna to have to look at that for loop, you can just minimize and that will collapse the curly brackets and then you can open it up just clicking that or clicking that arrow there too. So that's kinda of handy. And another handy feature is that it auto closes any open and curly braces, brackets, or parentheses. So you can see you type one parenthesis and it automatically creates the uh, closing one for you. So that's kinda of neat. Now on the left hand side, essentially what they've done is taken all of the native Arduino IDE dropdown menus and display them so you have easy access. So you can name the project, and it's kind of neat because you can use uh, project names with spaces. And then if you're familiar with the tab system in Arduino, you've got the same thing here, but instead of tabs, they're just adding files. So here you can create a new file, or you can upload files, and they've got an uploader for that. Now they don't have any autosave features yet, so you still have to hit the save button. But I have a feeling autosave will be in the near future for CodeBender. 
You also have the ability to set a description for the project, and it's kind of neat because you can link to a YouTube video or an Upverter project or, or one of these other things. And what's important about the description is it becomes the metadata that other people can search for when they're trying to discover sketches. Now you can also clone a project. This is essentially doing a save as, and you can download the file, and you can download it either as a zip or as a hex file. So one neat thing about CodeVendor is the plethora of boards that the IDE supports. They have tons of Arduino derivatives in here that you can choose from. So instead of having to try to cross-reference the derivative that you're using uh, to an Arduino board, you can just go ahead and pick it right there. That's kind of handy. Verifying the code is just as easy, and you can also upload it onto your Arduino very easily. And picking the serial monitors just straightforward. And you'll notice they've got the flash with programmer functionality built right into the left side here. And then you can open the serial monitor. It opens up right inside this window here, so you don't have to open up an additional screen. It is smaller, but it is also nice to have it right here. Finally, if you come over, you can see we've got a quick link to all the keyboard shortcuts. Those are always super handy. And then you've got uh, you've got the reformat code option, which is which is also nice. Now, another neat thing here that I like is how easy it is to share the sketch. So you can share it on social if you want, you can get a link to, sh to link to the sketch, or you can actually embed it right on your website, which is kind of handy. And what's really ingenious is that once you embed it on your website, people can actually go, and if they have the CodeBender extension installed on their web browser, they can actually load that code right onto their Arduino from your web page. That's really neat, and I'll have a, an example of that on the Open Source Hardware Group website, and you can check it out in the link below. And that's pretty much it for the CodeBender IDE in a nutshell. Now if we go back to the home page, there's a couple other handy features I'd like to talk about. First is how the libraries work. So CodeBender currently supports over 450 libraries, all of which you have access to by simply using the include statement in your sketches. So the most recent version of the libraries are kept on CodeBender. So if the library changes, your code would be affected likewise. For example, let's say the author of a library changes how a function works. Well, that could break your code. So every time a library gets updated, CodeBender does a couple things. First, they run a check on all the sketches uploaded to their system to see if any errors occur when the sketch is compiled. Then they notify the library author of these results. For example, hey, you just updated your library, and now you know 4,000 sketches on CodeBender are no longer compiling correctly. And then they also notify you if one of the libraries you use in your sketches is updated. So that can be a handy thing to know, make sure that your code is staying relevant. Another really neat feature that I look forward to using is the search functionality. This allows you to discover all the different types of sketches that have been uploaded by other users on CodeBender. And you can only imagine, as the user base gets larger, the more options you'll have to pick from. So that can really give you a head start if you're working on, on some type of project. A couple other neat features are the ability to chat with support staff. So if you're having trouble using the CodeBender IDE, you can get in touch. And then also they have quick access to a knowledge base for finding answers and making recommendations for the platform. And you know, since it's a relatively new platform, this is a great time to make recommendations because those that input can really have an effect uh, in this earlier stage. Now, if you sign up for a free account, all of your code is public, but CodeBender is in the process of allowing private accounts for premium members. They also have a point system on the website for Karma and CodeBender points. You get karma for things like answering questions and getting likes on your posts in the forums. It's kind of like a metric for helpfulness. Now, the CodeBender points are earned by inviting friends to join. For every friend you get to register, you get 20 CodeBender points, and your friend gets 50 CodeBender points. So once you earn 300 points, they send you a CodeBender t-shirt. Now, I think it would be cool if I could send 100 CodeBender t-shirts to Haiti. That means I only need 1,500 people to sign up for CodeBender using the link below in the description. I hope you can help me out with that. Well, I hope this has been a useful review of CodeBender for you. I personally plan on using CodeBender for some upcoming projects. If you would like more on the inside scoop at CodeBender, I also spoke with one of the founders, Vasilis, and you can listen to that conversation at our website using the link below in the description. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.